So Katie, everybody saw tonight's episode and again, we first have to thank you for bravely speaking out about your experience on the episode of The Bachelorette and also for joining us for this immensely important conversation. Um, so I wanna start out by asking you, what were your initial hopes uh, for this group date with Nick Vial? You know, I'll be honest. I think all of us going into the date thought it was gonna be more like drama, like spill the tea, what's in the DMs, like chaos, right? But then as we all sat there and started to open up, it actually became this very intimate setting of being vulnerable and sharing these very deep stories that are personal to each of us in our own way. And, you know, going into it, I didn't think I was going to ever share something like that. Um, but after hearing these men really just open up and, and cry and share things that they probably thought the same thing that they would never open up and share. I just felt so comforted and supported in this like safe circle. And I was like, I, I just had to let them know my side, you know, my story. Yeah, I, I can, I'm pretty sure I can speak for all of us watching. That was powerful to see you as the lead also take that same stance of being vulnerable, you know, of sharing your heart, uh, cause it made you more relatable, right? As the lead, we, you know, we always put you guys on a pedestal, which is to be so, uh, but it was just, so impactful to see that and watch that. Um, you said you were going in there thinking, okay, we're gonna talk about the DMs, keep it like PG or whatever. Um, how that make you, your feelings grow in, with those individuals in the room? I just appreciated that they weren't gonna hide anything. You know, and you guys only saw like a very small, you know, version of what we all talked about, but they were just laying it all out there. You know, and it was kind of like this like freeing moment, I think for a lot of them saying like, this is the darkest thing about me or my past this is who I am now, this is who I was then. And it just shows that they're not trying to like fake anything, you know, yeah. that they're not trying to trick me or hide anything. They're just like, take me as I am, here's everything. Yeah, no, so I- So kind of redo that. Yeah, no, I, I was, I mean, it was a real tear jerker last night. Like being in that circle, I can't imagine how hard that those conversations must have been, but I think it just goes to show, I mean, with the exception of the gentleman that was talking about the platform and the whole nine, I mean- Thomas. There you go, Thomas. I mean, everybody else's story was like you, you could tell <laughs> you could you could tell they dug deep and really, you know, wanted to show you that vulnerable side. So I just think it goes to show, you know, how great a, of a group that you guys had on the oh, show. Definitely so. I mean, I'm not really a crier, but uh, the gentleman that was talking about uh, his divorce. Yeah. Oh man, I was Hunter. like, oh. yeah, Hunter. What is what is you know his two kids? That that was sad uh, or just I felt for him. And then for Connor B to talk about his infidelity, yeah, I felt, I was like, damn, I trust him more. You know, it, vulnerability does something, right? It just, it, it, it takes this monkey off of our shoulder uh, and it makes us connect so much deeper with people. Why do you feel Katie that, you know, cause you had spoke on like the outside of pressures and how people may view things. Why do you feel in our society it's so hard to just be vulnerable and tell your truth. I mean, everyone's judging. We're in a, a world where no matter what you do, social media, in the public, everything's being judged constantly. And people do struggle with opening up and, and sharing their truth. I mean, I think it's just hard for people to start the conversation. And I think that's what being vulnerable does. You know, and that's kind of what that circle did is one person started to open up and then the other person was like, well, if they're going to share, I'm going to share and just kind of continue this domino effect. And that's really all I hope with, you know, me sharing my story tonight, that men and women who have gone through similar experiences can start talking about, you know, something that they've gone through or, you know, parents can talk to their kids about what consent is. Because in this time when it happened, you know, the Me Too movement was was not a thing yet. Like the whole thing about consent wasn't really a thing. So we were taught like it was our fault you know, mm. and it wasn't until later that you realize like, it's not your fault and consent is so important. 